Hey everyone, it's Connor from Coifin here. Today I'm going to highlight our market dashboards, which are pre-made dashboards and give you a high level overview of global themes such as currencies, commodities, corporate credit, yield curves, sectors, and more. While each is useful in its own right, I also wanna share some tips on how you can maximize the value of these dashboards, as well as highlight some features you might not have known about. So we're gonna navigate over here to the left-hand panel, as opposed to our My Dashboards section, which allows you to create custom dashboards using watch lists, charts, chart templates, and news feeds, the market dashboards are pre-populated for you. Each dashboard has a theme, as you can see here, and contains a varied set of components that include watch lists like this one, charts, performance ranking tables, and in dashboards like global yields, you'll also have a matrix. Currently in Coifin, we have dashboards which cover world equity indices, U.S. sectors and industries, countries from across the world, U.S. factors, highlighting the relative performance against the S&P, global yields with the matrix down here in the right-hand corner, an IPO calendar, which breaks down a table with some IPO details, as well as this market scatter chart, currency pairs, world economics, commodities, corporate credit spreads, fixed income factors, and yield curves. Each dashboard will behave in a slightly different way, but the core crux of each dashboard is that you have a watch list and a chart somewhere, and any time that you want to click on one of these panels on the left-hand side, this checkbox will add the data series to the chart. If we go back up to the world equity indices, I'll highlight some of the features that you might not have been aware about. So up here, we have this chart for world equity indices. We can see that we have some of the Americas and Europe highlighted here, and we have the performance ranking down there. Up here in the top right, you have a share button. So if you ever like the look of this chart and you wanna quickly share it with a friend or a team member, you can click this share button and it's gonna open the share graph dialogue that we have in Coifin. You can copy this as a link, which will then take a user to the G chart. You can embed this somewhere. You can download it as a PNG, or you can also customize this further. So if you click the customize button here, you can change the dimensions of the chart. You can add logos. You can add grid lines in the background and change the font sizes and coloring of the axes. And you can also change the background as well as add a title. We have a video for best practices in chart sharing and formatting. I'll leave the link to that in the description below. But when you're happy with your chart, you can click done and you have all of those options available to you. Alternatively, if you want to work on this chart some more because you don't have an in dashboard chart editor, you can click this button on the top right as well which is gonna then take you into a G chart inside of Coifin. So I'll go ahead and click that, and it's gonna pull that information for me into G chart. Inside the dashboard, some of the components can be hidden. So we can see the performance rankings here. I can change the time series on that as well, but if I just wanna hide that and have more of a focal view on the chart, I can do so by clicking this button here. Each dashboard also has one of these sliders. So if you want to give more focus to the table, you can do so. And if you wanna give more focus to the chart, you can do that as well. One of the features I think not many people know about in the dashboard series is that you can actually change the columns in your table. So I'm going to slide this chart over here and I'm going to click this button, which is column picker. You can see that the preset columns that we have for these US sectors and industries include some one day change data, the Z score and the one year, as well as the 52 week range. I don't necessarily want to see this information. So I'm going to click this column picker here. I don't want the price of these ETFs, but I do want the year-to-date change in percentage. I want that to be the first thing that I see after a one-day change. I'm going to get rid of the notional value. I don't need the Z-score. And I might add some longer range time series data there as well for the performance. And I might add the 52-week range next to year-to-date. So when you're happy with your selections, you can click out of that box and it's going to save these for you. Even if you readjust the size of the columns as well, anytime you click out of this dashboard and jump back in it, it's gonna save all of those changes for you. So you can format these tables, set it and forget it, and it's gonna be there for you when you jump back in. So there's a couple of other things that I wanna show you here, and one of them includes a workflow, but first you can embed these tables into websites if you want to. So if you set this up with US sectors and industries and you like the way it looks, you click this embed button here and it's gonna give you a few options. You can change the frame width and the frame height and you can plug this into any website and it's gonna update live as it's updating inside of Coifin. 
The last feature I'll show you a workflow around is save as watch list. So instead of you having to recreate these in a watch list of your own, you can just simply press this save as watch list button. And this is available on all of the dashboards. So when I click that, we have US sectors here. We can create as new. I'm going to click this, jump over to the Coifin watch list feature. And now we have that table in here. We can add columns. We can import views that we like as well. But for the purpose of this workflow, I purely just want the tickers in a watch list. And what I'm going to do here is click this button, which is going to highlight everything in the table. And I'm going to deselect all of my sectors because I only want the sectors in here. And now I'm going to go to bulk actions and delete. So I've deleted all of those. Now I just have a watch list of US sectors in it. I'm going to go over to my chart tool here. I'm going to add a US sector just to build a template. And I'm going to show you what I'm going to do with that. I'm going to go into the data series picker and type in relative strength. And what I want to compare that to is the SPY. You can change what you're comparing it to in here by selecting a ticker. I'm just going to reformat this chart so it looks a bit neater. And we're going to set that to three years. So if I zoom out a little bit here, I can see that since the end of 2021, consumer discretionary stocks have underperformed the S&P. I maybe want to see this view for all of the sectors at once. So what I'm going to go ahead and do is save this as a template. Sectors versus SPY, save that. Now I'm going to go ahead into the analytics section and jump on the lots of charts feature. We have a dedicated video for lots of charts as well. I would recommend checking it out. It's a really great feature. It allows you to view loads of charts at once. Right now it's on the Russell 3000 which I've selected up here, will allow you to pick an index, the holdings from an ETF or use your watch list. And with the stroke of a keyboard, you can flick through these charts. So right now I have a template set up for price targets. You can go into the options menu and change it to normalize performance or any other template that you've built. So if you remember that we just built the sectors versus S&P template, I'm gonna go ahead and attach that. And I'm gonna select that watch list that I built for sectors and plug that in. So now very quickly, we have this view where we can see the relative performance of the US sectors versus the S&P. We can see them all at once. We can change the time frame as well. Or we can also build this similar template to show versus the QQQ or whatever it is that we want. So that's just a very quick workflow of showing you how you can save these watch lists, create a quick chart template, and then you have this view and you can come back to this time and time again. That does it for this video. I hope that gives you some inspiration of how you can maximize the use of market dashboards. As always, feel free to drop a comment in the comment section below. Reach out to us at Coifin Charts over on Twitter. Our Coifin help desk email is help at coifin.com. Thank you.